Hi everyone, my name is Xunping Yang, and today I'm going to talk about our recent work, Interrupted and Cascaded Permutation Invariant Training for Speech Separation. And the first question we would like to ask is, do we need PIT? Well, first, let us take a look at the label ambiguity problem. At first, we input a training mixture x1 into the model, and the model will output two predictions the blue and the red waveform, respectively, in the two output channels. Then, we will have two possible corresponding label assignments between the two model outputs and the two ground truths, which is the green one and the brown one. However, we must choose either one corresponds to update the model parameter. So, here is how permutation invariant training works. We will calculate both the cost of the green and the brown one and choose the minimum among them. And in this case, PIT will choose the green one. Then we will input another training sample X2 into the model. And this time, PIT will maybe choose the blue corresponding label assignment. And in every epoch, this process will be done for all training samples. And if we only take a look at the chosen crown truths for each output channel, like this three for output channel one and this other three for output channel two, this can be seen as the clustering of the ground truths into two. And that is, PIT implicitly groups all the ground truths into two clusters. So then, here comes another question. Can we do the pre-assignments of the cluster before training? Then, fix this assignment for all training epochs. So, what would happen if we can do the pre-assignments of the ground truths in the mixture and fix this assignment during training instead of using PIT? So, what we're going to do is to cluster all of the ground truths in the training data into two groups. And the first method we, we use is rather simple, the energy-based one, where we assign the louder ground truths in the mixture to cluster 1, matching output channel 1, and the quieter to cluster 2, matching the output channel 2. And the second method is based on the clustering of the speaker's embedding, where we extract the embeddings of each ground truth in the mixture and cluster them into two groups. Then compare these two methods to PIT, where we can view the assignment using PIT being dynamic and the two proposed here being fixed. Then we can see from the figure below that indicating the performance of the validation set at each training epoch, with PIT in blue and speaker embedding based in black and the energy based in orange. And from this three curve, it can be easily seen that either these two fixed assignment methods cannot perform as well as PIT does. So PIT seems necessary from this viewpoint. But is there any problem using PIT? Well, here is a common phenomenon we have observed during PIT training. That is, if we input a training mixture X, then at epoch I, according to PIT, we might choose this assignment. However, in the next epoch for the exactly same training mixture X, PIT might choose the opposite assignment. Then the next the choice made by PIT might switch it back again. So, the assignments using PIT might switch back and forth. And this is even serious in the early stage of the training that the poor model output signals make the choice of the assignment very random. And this inconsistency of the assignment may lead to the inconsistency of the model training. So, to verify this, 
we have recorded the label assignment switch, which we defined as the difference of the label assignment choices between two consecutive epochs. And from the figure below, this black dot represents the number of switches. And we can see that in the early stage of the training, before epoch 40, the switches are commonly large. And the blue dots are the SDR performance of the validation data at each epoch. And we can see from the red circle that when the number of switches is large, the performance of the validation data will drop accordingly, which verified that the switches could cause damage for the model training. And here is our proposed approach that the concept is similar to the before mentioned fixed label assignment training. But this time, we get the fixed assignment from the training of a PIT model. In other words, we trained a model using PIT for L epoch first and record the choices of the label assignment for each training mixture at the else epoch. But instead of using the trend model, we reinitialize the model parameters and train the new model with this fixed label assignment for 100 epoch. Then, after the second stage training, we can continue to train this model with PIT for another 100 epoch. Then first, we tested different L for the second stage fixed assignment training, where the L ranges from 1, 10, 20 to 100, and each fixed assignment is trained with 100 epoch. And the red dot indicates the validation performance after training for 100 epoch, where the model trained with L equals to 1 have the validation SDR close to 16 dB, and the best model is trained with L equals to 80, with the SDR rate being 17.66 dB. And the blue dot indicates the performance of the test data, which the trend is similar to the validation data. Then we compare each model's performance with the PIT baseline, indicating as the red and the blue horizontal line where the validation performance is 16.17 dB and the testing performance is 15.82 dB. And we can see that only the model using the assignment from L equals to 1 performed worse than the PIT baseline. Even when we get the fixed label from L equals to 10, which is the label assignment chosen from the 10th airport of PIT training the performance is a lot better. And the best performance we have tested is from the label chosen from L equals to 80, where the SDR performance on the test set is 17.36 dB, which is a 1.54 dB boost compared to the PIT baseline. Then, we analyze the number of different level assignments compared to L equals 280. And we can see that the label assignment chosen from L equals to 1 have approximately 10% difference from L equals 280, which is why the performance isn't as good as the others. And this is the overall training curve of our proposed method which the curve indicates the validation performance of each epoch. And the first stage of our training is based on the original PIT, where we only get the label assignment from the stage for the training of the second stage. And after the training of the second stage, we can assume that this model parameters is good enough for PIT training, since the concern for PIT is that we don't have a good model initialization and the label assignment would be rather random. But here, after the fixed label assignment training, the model have already been optimized toward a good direction. Then, the third stage of our methods is to continue train the model from the second stage with PIT. And we can see that in this configuration, the performance on the validation data can be boosted to 17.99 dB at the end of the third stage. 
and we want to compare the label assignment switches between the first stage and the third stage, since both stage use PIT but with different initial model parameters. And the figure below indicates the switches of the first stage PIT, which is initialized with a random model parameter. And the figure at the bottom right shows the switches of the third stage PIT, which is initialized with a good model parameters. And we can see that the switches is a lot lower than the first stage and a lot smoother. And we can see the blue curve indicating the validation SDR is also better. So to conclude, we have found a way to obtain good fixed label assignment through the previous PIT, and this method can be utilized on any separation model. And with fixed label training, which is our second stage, the model performance can outperform PIT. And with using further PIT training, which is our third stage, we can achieve a significantly better result with SDR improvement rate of 17.7 dB on test testnet model. And thank you for your listening.